If the elephant fight had ended fatally for me, it would not have been a matter of shame. Death drops the curtain even on emperors, it is no dishonor. The shame lay in what my brothers did. Early military campaigns and administration. Bundela War. The Mughal army under the command of Aurangzeb recaptures Orca in October in 1635. Aurangzeb was nominally in charge of the force sent to Bundelkhand with the intent of subduing the rebellious ruler of Orca, Jujhar Singh, who had attacked another territory in defiance of Shah Jahan's policy and was refusing to atone for his actions. By arrangement, Aurangzeb stayed in the rear, away from the fighting, and took the advice of his generals as the Mughal army gathered and commenced the siege of Orca in 1635. The campaign was successful and Singh was removed from power. Viceroy of the Deccan A painting from Pachanama depicts Prince Aurangzeb facing a maddened war elephant named Sudhakar. After Shah Jahan's vassals had been devastated by the alarming expansion of Ahmadnagar during the reign of the Nizam Shahi by Prince Murtaza Shah III, the emperor dispatched Aurangzeb, who in 1636 brought the Nizam Shahi dynasty to an end. In 1637, Aurangzeb married the Safavid princess Dilraz Banu, posthumously known as Rabi Uddidurani. She was his first wife and chief consort as well as his favorite. He also had an infatuation with a slave girl, Hirabai, whose death at a young age greatly affected him. In his old age, he was under the charms of his concubine, Yudapuri Bai. The latter had formerly been a companion to Dara Shuko. In the same year, 1637, Aurangzeb was placed in charge of annexing the small Rajput kingdom of Baglana, which he did with ease. In 1638, Aurangzeb married Nawab Bai, later known as Ramath al Nisa. At some point, Aurangzeb married Aurangabadi Mahal, who was a Circassian or Georgian. In 1644, Aurangzeb's sister, Jahanara, was burned when the chemicals in her perfume were ignited by a nearby lamp while in Agra. This event precipitated a family crisis with political consequences. Aurangzeb suffered his father's displeasure by not returning to Agra immediately but rather three weeks later. Shah Jahan had been nursing Jahanara back to health in that time and thousands of vassals had arrived in Agra to pay their respects. Shah Jahan was outraged to see Aurangzeb enter the interior palace compound in military attire and immediately dismissed him from his position of viceroy of the Deccan. Aurangzeb was also no longer allowed to use red tents or to associate himself with the official military standard of the Mughal emperor. Other sources tell us that Aurangzeb was dismissed from his position because Aurangzeb left the life of luxury and became a fakir. In 1645, he was barred from the court for seven months and mentioned his grief to fellow Mughal commanders. Thereafter, Shah Jahan appointed him governor of Gujarat. His rule in Gujarat was marked with religious disputes but he was rewarded for bringing stability. In 1647, Shah Jahan moved Aurangzeb from Gujarat to be governor of Balkh, replacing a younger son, Murad Baksh, who had proved ineffective there. The area was under attack from Uzbek and Turkmen tribes. While the Mughal artillery and muskets were a formidable force, 
so too were the skirmishing skills of their opponents. The two sides were in stalemate and Aurangzeb discovered that his army could not live off the land, which was devastated by war. With the onset of winter, he and his father had to make a largely unsatisfactory deal with the Uzbeks, giving away territory in exchange for nominal recognition of Mughal sovereignty. The Mughal force suffered still further with attacks by Uzbeks and other tribesmen as it retreated through the snow to Kabul. By the end of this two-year campaign, into which Aurangzeb had been plunged at a late stage, a vast sum of money had been expended for little gain. Further inauspicious military involvements followed, as Aurangzeb was appointed governor of Multan and Sindh. His efforts in 1649 and 1652 to dislodge the Safavids at Kandahar, which they had recently retaken after a decade of Mughal control, both ended in failure as winter approached. The logistical problems of supplying an army at the extremity of the empire, combined with the poor quality of armaments and the intransigence of the opposition have been cited by John Richards as the reasons for failure, and a third attempt in 1653, led by Dara Shirko, met with the same outcome. Aurangzeb became viceroy of the Deccan again after he was replaced by Dara Shuko in the attempt to recapture Kandahar. Aurangzeb regretted this and harbored feelings that Shirko had manipulated the situation to serve his own ends. Aurangzeb's two jaggers, land grants, were moved there as a consequence of his return and, because the Deccan was a relatively impoverished area, this caused him to lose out financially. So poor was the area that grants were required from Malva and Gujarat in order to maintain the administration and the situation caused ill feeling between father and son. Shah Jahan insisted that things could be improved if Aurangzeb made efforts to develop cultivation. Aurangzeb appointed Murshid Tsuli Khan, citation needed, to extend to the Deccan the Zapt revenue system used in northern India. Murshid Tsuli Khan organized a survey of agricultural land and a tax assessment on what it produced. To increase revenue, Murshid Tsuli Khan granted loans for seed, livestock, and irrigation infrastructure. Aurangzeb proposed to resolve the situation by attacking the dynastic occupants of Golconda, the Kut Shahis, and Bijapur, the Adil Shahis. As an adjunct to resolving the financial difficulties, the proposal would also extend Mughal influence by accruing more lands. Aurangzeb advanced against the Sultan of Bijapur and besieged Baidar. The Kiladar, governor or captain, of the fortified city, Sidi Marjan, was mortally wounded when a gunpowder magazine exploded. After 27 days of hard fighting, Baidar was captured by the Mughals and Aurangzeb continued his advance. Again, he was to feel that Dara had exerted influence on his father, believing that he was on the verge of victory in both instances, Aurangzeb was frustrated that Shah Jahan chose then to settle for negotiations with the opposing forces rather than pushing for complete victory. The four sons of Shah Jahan all held governorships during their father's reign. The emperor favored the eldest, Dara Shuko. This had caused resentment among the younger three, who sought at various times to strengthen alliances between themselves and against Dara. There was no Mughal tradition of primogeniture, the systematic passing of rule, upon an emperor's death, to his eldest son. 
Instead it was customary for sons to overthrow their father and for brothers to war to the death among themselves.